coming down from that top eight match here in Greensboro. Jeffrey Saran Rep, Saran Kirk Dupes next to Bay. Housekeeping to take care of. Let's talk about our friends over at trollandtoad.com. Go to over trollandtoad.com. Use promo code Greensboro, G R E E N S B O R O, for 10% on checkout. Also, check out that buy list if you're trying to make a little green on St. Patty's Day. Absolutely here. We got our top four. Another little website to plug. Also, uh, just started GoFundMe.com slash save Alex <laughs> Um Let's talk about this matchup. We've got, uh, we're going to have Arlo Neal on the right-hand side of your screen. <laughs> we're going to have Andrew Martin on the left side of your screen. Yep. Andrew Martin, most notably known for that mirror counter crazy sudden death back and forth that we saw earlier today. And Arlo Neal winning his winning in in round 14 against uh, Hunter Butler, Blastoise, that couldn't really get anything going. So tell me a little bit of Arlo's deck. Let's refresh uh, the folks' memory at home. Yeah, Arlo's playing a Zork. Garbodor here does play that Mr. Mime uh, from the team upset there, not allowing your opponent to pick up any Pokemon with damage counters on them there. Um, and then from there, it's kind of a little more traditional. Ops for two Trashlands Garbodors over the um, Garbotoxin. So 2 1 split there. Um, outside of that, uh, pretty traditional list here, has the computer search here, has a communication red card, um, and it does run the Oracorio as well. Um, over on Andrew's side of the board, Drampa Garb. Um, I didn't see a lot of action uh, from Drampa in that matchup um, that we saw him play and just mm -hmm. leaned more on that uh, Sigilyph in that Picaram uh, matchup. But not a lot of crazy stuff in here uh, besides the, uh, the Siggy Boy GX that mm -hmm. we've covered at uh, full length here. A lot of parallel cities, which is going to be crucial mm -hmm. here. Uh, four Floatstone. So trying to shut off uh, Arlo's abilities on his turn and parallel city in the same and just yep. really try and repeatedly devastate Arlo's board. It's going to bring it back to that deck that uh, kind of took Storm last season expanding here, that Drampa Garb list that was just a, literally just a bunch of uh, you know Garbodor, uh, small life of Drampa, but heavy parallel city to stop the f to stop the uh, the Sky Fields and Zork from really getting to the high damage number there, enhanced hammers, different things like that. So kind of similar to that there with some uh, additional tricks there in the form of Sigil of GX. I don't see uh, Sigilyph coming back. It's a good it's a good way to chip in some damage. Mm -hmm. It's a good uh, blocker, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, because it does reflect that damage back from EX and GX Pokemon with yep. Mirror Counter. Um, so Andrew knows this deck inside and out. Yep. Kettler got to interview him earlier today. The guy's really high on his deck, really enjoys it, really think he made the correct choice for this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are paying dividends. As worst case scenario, he's leaving with a nice piece of top four glass uh, in the form of a regional trophy. 100% there. Drampa, uh, Drampa uh, GX there. are going to have that Righteous Edge attack to discard those different double colorless energy on Zora GX. Uh, so keep that in mind here. It's going to be a big factor in his game here. So if Arlo can mitigate around that, maybe uh, force Andrew to play more items than what he wants to, could take a di uh, different approach here and attack with Trash Lynch for the home, for the home game. Uh, Andrew going to try and knock off as many DCs as he can while maybe using Parallel City so that Drampa Garb can't be uh, one hit KO'd on the way back in. Mm -hmm. You know, a bit of ability lock. Righteous Edge, Parallel City to three seems like a pretty good setup. Trubbish in the active for Andrew, Zorua in the active for Arlo. Andrew's on the ones and twos here, draws for turn, takes a look at the grip, and sees what he can do from here. One interesting thing to note on Andrew's list here, I think it was kind of pointed out previously, is that he runs zero Ultra Balls. He runs just four Mysterious Treasure as his Pokemon Search. Outside of Computer Search, obviously, there. But, um, but if you want to search Drampa, the only way he can do that is through Computer Search. I believe that's uh, that's something along the lines of uh, what Robin Schultz did uh, with his Worlds deck um, this past season. Mm -hmm. yep. um, you know, opted to go with lower counts of Ultra Ball. I don't think committed fully to zero. However, worth noting. Andrew Martin, uh, Mysterious Treasure away. I believe that's a Rescue Stretcher. Mm -hmm. um, just by the gold in the little corner. A uh, Wonder Tag. Uh, I know he has an N in hand, so uh, maybe a Bridget here just to get his board set up and Bridget on cue. Here we go here. We do see him going through right now. Probably going to grab another Trubbish here. That's a, this is another avenue to get Drampa as well. Drampa going to be pivotal in this matchup too. Righteous Edge off those energies. Uh, and his Roblox Sudowoodo, another key card here that when Parallel City is not in play, the Roblox Sudowoodo can slow down Zorark. Andrew going to decide on Drampa, Pseudo Wudo, Heavy Drampa. Drampa. So Andrew, fully aware of how he's tackling this matchup. Pseudo Wudo immediately. That way, yes, um, they both only play three stadiums. Mm -hmm. If Andrew's th thinking, if I don't start the stadium war, I have Pseudo Wudo back up whenever mm -hmm. Arlo comes in with um, a Skyfield. And maybe this wow, is. Wow, he has everything. He has Flowstone, he has Computer Search at hand, too. 
Man, got to be feeling good about that. Got to be feeling good about that. Andrew with just a pass, just a pass after emptying the handout. Um, Ultra ball for Arlo. Going to try and match the intensity of Andrew's start pitching uh, Professor Slickamore and Pokemon Communications. One big thing to keep in mind here, Arlo only runs one field blower. Now, yes, his deck does operate around... Um, Garbatoxin, but that's when Garbatoxin is, is in his, his control, not in his opponent's control there. So with the one field blower there, it may be a little bit tougher to work around Garbatoxin here. But if Arlo can really explode and get enough Pokemon on the board, with that in mind, he can handle the rest of his matchup here. But Bridget grabbing a uh, collection, a garbage collection uh, Trubbish and two Zerua. Yep, yeah, uh, Arlo's going to have to lean on his uh, Zerua early uh, before, this, uh, before Andrew can really start leveraging all the control factors mm -hmm. that he's got going on. The Parallel City, the Righteous Edge, uh, the Garbotoxic Garbodor on his terms. Um, just a pass after that setup. Arlo not wanting to commit too much more to the board and just an N. Let's rinse these hands. Let's draw six and let's go. I really do like, uh, I think he, Arlo did have a DC in his hand right there and opted not to try to go for the Paralyzing Gaze play. Um, wants to hold that DC there to get full value out of it there. He wants to make sure the clean KO when he touches DC or DCE, knowing that it may go away the next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Preser th the DC is effectively safer in the deck than it is in play until he's actually ready to uh, Get the announce an attack yep. of value. Uh, six cards for both players here. Um, a little bit of variation how they draw those cards. Interesting to note. Not, not sure how it's going to come to play. <laughs> Arlo <laughs> likes to see them one at a time. Andrew pins them all down and takes a look at once. Psychic energy is what we see. That's the easy one. Choice band coming down. Not too difficult there. Yes. Psychic energy coming down. Now there Big is... Big wheel GX. Shuffles hand to his deck, draws, what, 10 cards? Uh, a, a modest 10. Modest 10. Well, uh, Arlo saying, well, while you're shuffling, relax on drawing 10. Just make it 6. Skyfield coming down and a quick end from Arlo, that full art from that premium collection box. Uh, a little bit different art there. Arlo does potentially have the opportunity with that Skyfield in play to take a knockout here on Dramba. Yep, if he gets the full bench here, he will be able to take that easy knockout there. That would be nine total Pokemon hitting exactly 180 there, or one less with the choice band. Uh, both options as well, but with six cards here, let's see if he gets there. Quick question for you, Jeff. How come uh, Drampa Garbodor, the name of that deck, never really popularized as Grandpa? Question. It's a very, very good question there, and I do not have a very good answer for you. Comedically hilarious to me. I think that should have been a little bit stronger. Uh -huh. um, not too bad here. Mind Jack. Zorark going to announce that attack uh, 10 plus 30 times the bench. That's four, so it's 130, and that's a DCE loss for Arlo. It is going to be a DCE loss for Arlo here, not getting that KO there. Righteous Edge for sure going to take that away. Arlo does run one special charge. Please keep, to keep that in mind as well. Yep, not going to the loss zone here, uh, or maybe just a way to retreat this and taking uh, d getting rid of the DCE the old school Guzma? way with a, with a knockout. Does he have Guzma here? He can Guzma to Lele here and do uh, Berserk for the KO, but opposite take out a Zerua. Zerua, uh, Drampa stepping up, Berserk with plenty of damage left over to take that knockout. Berserk uh, initially does 80 base there, but when you have damage counters on one of your bench Pokemon, does it an another 70 damage to give it a little boost to 150. All of Drampa's attacks incredibly relevant in this matchup. DCE comes down on the Zorua. Uh, Floatstone on the Tapu Lele Pseudo Udo Roadblock versus Seeker for Professor Slickamore. And we're drawn seven. Has to pitch the Psychic. Mm. Arlo, can't buy, Arlo can't buy that back. Only has one left for the entire in the entirety of the match. Uh, excuse me, entirety of this game. Uh, might be hard to find when he needs it to uh, trash a lanch. He fortunately, fortunately does play one Super Rod, um, but that's still, you know, you don't want to always use that to get back the energies as well. You want to use that to get back Pokemon. Uh, since he's not playing a Rest Stretcher, Super Rod is his form of recovery uh, for either energy or Pokemon here. So we'll see how to leverage that there. But another Mind Jack here doing the 130 uh, to the other Trampa. A lot of damage on Andrew's board. There's a parallel City. Parallel City off the cuff, going to be uh, a pretty good one. Um, easy, uh, easy pitch of the uh, of the Tapu Lele, I think. Mm -hmm. I think you'd like to maintain your your roadblock pseudo Udo. Uh, Trubbish coming down. There it is. Is Garbotoxin is live? So Parallel City going to come down, pitching the pseudo Udo. Arlo goes, not enough value. I only have one field blower. Turning off Garbotoxin. Mm -hmm. 
not not necessarily worth it. I'm going to keep my Tapu Lele here. Same thing with Tapu Lele, too, with this damage now, the Jampu, uh, the Jampu, uh, both of them there. Uh, energy Drive from Tapu Lele is another out to take the KO on both Pokemon. Great point. Can't, uh, can't negate the fact that Tapu Lele uh, is a liability, uh, mm -hmm. a two-prize liability. Yes, it can energy drive. Uh, however, a DCE choice band stepping up on the new Drampa can mm -hmm. knock it out. So a good prize exchange here, not as controlling as I originally anticipated it would be. Um, Arlo promotes the Tapu Lele with the Float Stone. I think we're at a point now where we do see that control coming into effect here. Garbotoxin not allowing Arlo to do much right now. They couldn't trade, has a massive hand, but didn't do anything else here. Only has the three Pokemon at play. I believe I did see a Skyfield in Arlo's hand. Um, won't bring him much value because it's only bringing it up to four. Mm -hmm. um, and now uh, the Zorak GX's attack a little bit neutered here uh, because of the Parallel City mm -hmm. and the inability to get more Pokemon down. And this will be huge now because now Tapolitic come over here, hit it for 100 damage uh, with that Choice Ban and apply more pressure to it than Zorak's going to even apply to the Tapu Lele. Andrew playing a lot of cards down, float stones all over the place. Uh, DCE, and it looks like a, maybe another Tapu Lele going to the discard pile off that Juniper. Maybe looking for uh, another Psychic Energy. No attachment for turn. He did attach DCE oh, excuse to me, the, uh, to the yep. Tapu Lele up top. I apologize uh, with that muscle ban. Uh, just a, a, a cheeky way to get some damage on the Zoroark. No, no real risk of getting KO'd exactly. on, the, on the return. Or, you know, you, you Arlo trying to think, maybe a slow roll, maybe has the field blower sky field, just waiting for a prime target uh, for Andrew to slip up and be able to take a big time knockout while still having a heavily damaged Drampa. Yep, there you go, the right, right, right on the queue there. You do see the field blower um, going down, and then as well as the sky field, so yep. And uh, if he has a, a few times to get some Pokemon to play here, Muscle he does have Colrus as well to get some extra draw going there. But he's only put two more Pokemon down because of that roadblock Sudowoodo. Roadblock pseudo Udo just causing problems. However, <laughs> items are live. So what Arlo can do with the Skyfield is play down two Pokemon, get Garbotoxin Garbodor, activate it on his own Trubbish, mm -hmm. and then unlock uh, the rest of his bench under the Skyfield, play some stuff down, and try and take a big knockout. And Very you see the floatstone here. come down on the Trubbish. Shaman for two red, red card. card Lele. Or excuse me, three. Uh, I, I thought he singled, singled two there. Uh, red card, Lele, and Zorak GX. Yes, this will be Zeusy here. He's going to discard both of those, unfortunately, right now. Going to probably grab uh, either another Shaman or Zerua right now. Um, just to kind of get set up for next turn. And, yeah, definitely the Zerua here knowing that uh, potentially uh, he could not get that piece that he needs to stop that roadblock to the Ludo, red card, and then the Colrus. Colrus for eight. So off this eight, Arlo really wants to see Garbotox and Garbodor and some ways to get Pokemon back down on the bench. Mm -hmm. um, again, needs the Garbotox and Garbodor to shut off the roadblock ability of Andrew Pseudo Udo and then just load up the bench uh, to a critical mass point so that he can take the knockout on this Tapu Lele. So Andrew going to be drawing four because of the red card here. Arlo getting a nice eight off that Colrus with four full benches on each side. Um, I think eight. I saw a computer search maybe there. It's kind of hard to tell there. Battle Compressor coming to the top. Let me take a look at the discard. Battle Compressor is at the top. Taking a look at the discard, seeing uh, an, a quick little item count, knows that Trash Avalanche is looming. Supporter has been played, so Arlo's not going to be able to go after the Trash Lance Garb mm -hmm. just yet uh, because he doesn't play any uh, copies of, for example, Counter Catch or anything to be able to do that without a supporter. Mm -hmm. um, Battle Compressor going to thin the deck. We see Guzma come down first. Um, bench Barrier, Mr. Mime. Won't be needing that much in this matchup at all. Guzma to save for later on, probably to get that uh, Trash Lance off the discard or off the bench to KO later on. And I'm not sure what else he's going to thin here just yet. He already got rid of the Pokemon communication early in the game. Opting His for deck is small. That is quick eye check. Uh, 10 cards maybe? I'd say 10 to 12 cards, yeah. Still working hard though, trying to get this knockout on the Tapu Lele, and I think Arla will feel incredibly comfortable if he does. Propagate, trade. 
It is able to trade. There's no more Garbo Toxin in play right now, but he needs to apply, evolve the Garbo Toxin himself as so he start benching some more Pokemon with that Roadblock Sudowoodo in the way. DCE All on right. the Tapu Lele. Okay. Roadblock off. There's one. There's, There's two. two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 140. Choice Band knockout. Yep. Andrew didn't see that one coming. And now there's a backup Tapu Lele ready to come up and uh, take, a, take a knockout on the, the Drampa. on bench. Well set up here by Arlo, getting his, each of his knockouts leveled out there. We saw that he wasn't taking the direct KOs on those Drampas, but right now with that lever, little damage left there, cleaning it up nicely for the remainder of the game. And that's what I was concerned about. I think Arlo really did a great job slow rolling his hand, mm -hmm. just passing, hitting in. Uh, showing uh, signs of just a weak hand, and Andrew bit, and Arlo just completely capitalized and undid all of Andrew's work. Mm. I like that he's getting rid of the Garbotoxin right now and forcing it for Andrew to put into play because Arlo knows he's going to need to explode one more turn to get that Guzma on the last Drampa. And uh, the great part about this, too, is Andrew can promote Drampa and take the KO here, but he knows Lele's going to be right there to return knockout, so he really needs to bank on this Traction's Garboder to get the KO. Luckily, Andrew uh, does have a couple outs to Energy, has a copy of Rainbow, and I believe uh, three copies of Psychic left. Teammate's going to do it, um, and I think Arlo's elated to see that because off that Battle Compressor grabbing Guzma, uh, that has to signal a little bit that there's a Guzma in there. Grab two cards here. I'm venture to say one is for sure the psychic energy. Um, another one could be a verse secret to chain uh, teammates one more time, possibly there, depending on how this next turn pans out. Retreat. Yeah, you got a knockout, but I think Arlo is just going to flash the versus seeker. There we go. Verse seeker right there. Guzma on the Drampa on hand. We go into a game two. Yep. Game two. Oh, very, 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 very well played by Arlo. Yep. Um, Again, I, and I mentioned like, oh, Andrew put himself in a good position, but I was like, what if Andrew or what if Arlo is just slow rolling yep. his hand to have him put up a, a more preferable knockout, yep. and then you just have this incredibly damaged uh, Drampa GX on the bench? That's what's panned out. Arlo carved through uh, that Tapu Lele GX yep. to go down to two prizes, and after that, it was Fisher Price. Yeah, he went through and he played, like I said, he slowed it a little bit there, kind of played it, played it back foot a little bit, let him say, hey, you know, what? I'm gonna get to where I need to be before I really start to pop off. And he held that sky field, held the Ultra Ball, held the different pieces there to really start to get back into that game and take those two knockouts on the Drampas there. Arlo, I'm gonna try and r rinse and repeat that process. Not much needs to change uh, in Arlo's game plan. Andrew, on the other hand, might need to hit the drawing board again. Seemed very confident in how mm -hmm. uh, he was setting up to, to attack the matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, got lulled into a false sense of security, and uh, Arlo made him pay. So I think Andrew's going to be a little bit more cautious yep. when, uh, you know, trying to just get some chip-in damage on yep. a Zoroark. Um, you know, a Righteous Edge would have been another piece of the puzzle there. Yep. Uh, you're not opening yourself up to just have a knockout and then an easy knockout. At yep. least it would have been just an easy knockout, and then mm -hmm. you can kind of pivot and adjust there, maybe into Trash Lanch, yep. and have no more two prizers out there. Um, Andrew's got some lessons learned and has to learn them quick and move into game two. A lot of time left on the clock here, just under 60 minutes. So uh, these players are going to have more than uh, enough time to get through the, sec the second and possibly third game. Yeah, I think Andrew needs to take a little more defensive approach this game. Really come back and force Arlo to take the offensive there. With Tashin's EC is maybe attacking there. Arlo did play that fairly well game one there. Really only attached to DC one time. And to do that mind jack to play twi the attack twice, which set up those Drample plays later on there. So uh, between both players there, depending on how those DCs get laid there, I think you're going to see a defensive approach from Andrew. Uh, quickly setting up. Another key moment in the game, Andrew did Guzma up Azorua uh, rather than Righteous Edging or even uh, w was unable to Berserk. At the yeah. oh no, it was yeah, Berserk, berserk, was, yeah, act berserk was, active. was active. So um, it was the fresh Drampa and the old one with the bench. So worth considering that there were some other options there. Uh, bench Barrier, Mr. Mime, and uh, uh, Trubbish. Trubbish on the bench there for Arlo. Sigilith coming to the bench there. Just an energy attachment and pass. Not much going on there. Arlo passes also. Oh, boy. This is one of those Barn games. Barn burner. DCE, Floatstone, 80. 80, K easy KO. Does Arlo have a response here? Prop egg. Oh, no. There is nothing going on right now. Guzma back up that. 
Make him take the KO on the egg instead. Yep. I mean, that's oh, Ar Arlo fighting from behind, but trying to make moves here. This is knockout. Knockout. This is just attack pass. This Arlo gets something off this top deck. Sycamore. Sycamore. That oh. is going to be a costly one, though. Yeah. Uh, one Garbo Toxic going down there. A, f a, f a few versus Seekers. Oh, man. Double Carlos DCE. there. Choice band. Just might as well. I'm going to lose him anyways. Get him out there. And at least if it's knocked out, it's a DC that can be recycled with special charge. Mm -hmm. Like I like Arlo dumping out the hand there. Plus, side effect of choice band. You know that could be a Garbotoxin Garbodor later exactly. or a Trash Lanch Garbodor. Yeah, I'll say you could, you could like hard retreat it here, pull up something else there, then involve the Garbotoxin. Maybe not now, but there's a couple options for later on if it doesn't if it uh, does not get uh, KO'd by this uh, Sigil of GX. I think if you're gonna give up a single prize KO anyways. Um, what you want to do here is prop an egg back, put it on the bench, retreat into the egg, and try and get Andrew to take a knockout another egg. Because mm -hmm. I think you're giving up a, a single prize knockout here regardless. Yep. So it might as well be something of no true value to you uh, in furthering your game plan. Battle Compressor for Bridget in the discard. Yeah, I think, I think there's a little confusion there, thinking that he might have been searching for the Bridget there, but he was just Battle Compressing her way for next turn. Arlo, quick to explain that. Uh, fairly reasonable uh, assumptions on both sides, but glad we got, got, got that cleaned up. Ultra Ball, Prop Egg, um, and I can't quite see. It's a Psychic Pokemon there. Is it? Uh, Could be Oracorio. Might be Oracorio. Might be the, like the, uh, the promo Oracorio. The Guardians Rising uh, Oracorio promo. Okay, garbage, garbage Collection collect versus Seeker on top. top of the deck, yep. Doesn't retreat. Uh, I think that was a bit of a misstep. Um, I, I think, you know, being able to maintain a Trubbish through the route of Prop Egg. Um, a little risky, obviously, if Andrew's able to Guzma around it, but I think you're past that point of mm -hmm. that not being worth doing. Uh, ver uh, excuse me. Versus Seeker off the top of the garbage collection. Professor mm -hmm. Sycamore, discard your hand, draw seven cards. This is going to be an interesting spot to be in right now because there's no Garboder, Garboder in play for Arlo Neal, so whatever damage he does to this Sigilith <laughs> GX is going to smack him right back. We Look, got a reader, folks. Got the man in the mirror here. Going to hit him back with the hee-hee. <laughs> Same damage <laughs> right back at the Zora Come GX. Come on, dude. That was good. I'm going to laugh. I, I wish I could laugh more about that. I'm just so stunned you actually went there given all the current – Allegations that we absolutely <laughs> do not support in any way, shape, or form here at the Legendary Gaming Network. Trubbish coming down. Propagation eggs getting pitched to the Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball Zorg finding Zorg GX. Arlo really on the back foot right now. But, I mean, honestly, both players not doing much right now. I guess Arlo's in a little bit more of a better spot. Uh, he doesn't even have to attack right now, really. He could just kind of... Uh, play a little defensive here and hold back uh, until he has to attack. That's the second time Arlo's flashed the number of cards he's drawing out, and uh, I was like, oh, it's three, and he drew four. So, um, Arlo, got to work on your uh, finger positioning there for us here in the booth. He is going to go for the attack here. He's going to hit 100 here and take the 100 right back at him. Maybe thinking hitting for 100, um, you know, Sigilif only hits for 80. However... Uh, can hit for 120 by flipping that GX marker. So I hope Arlo took that into consideration. So you need a choice man to take out the GX marker here because of the resistance as well. So it's going to be 40 times the energy there. It's going to hit for uh, the 80. So uh, the intercept GX is 60 times. 60 times, times okay. So 60 there, 120. Then and and the eighty and the eighty doesn't apply resistance. So choice man gets you there. Choice man uh, doesn't get you there on either end there without the GX attack. You're right. With that, uh, with the Sonic Wing, Wonder Tag, Bridget, Grandpa, Grandpa, Trubbish, shuffling up for Andrew. We're gonna see a quick cut here, right as well, right now. We're gonna be seeing a Sonic Wing more than likely uh, to Arlo Zorak here. I don't see the Choice Band just. Wait, there's Choice Band. Oh, we Sonic, are Sonic Wing. Wing for the KO because of resistance. Yep, Sonic Wing says no resistance. I don't think. Uh, Nope, Sonic, Sonic. no resistance. Read the attack, my friend. Yep. Sonic Wing. <laughs> Arlo, maybe a bit of a misstep there. Assumed that uh, the resistance was going to be good. Sonic Wing does have that line of text. Do not factor in resistance. Zorak GX stepping in, and it's going to have to chunk into this uh, Sigilif and have a little bounce back damage. You know, fortunately enough there, I mean, uh, prior to the benching of the Tapulator there, he did have enough to KO the Sigilif, uh, but only have the 80 done back to its. Uh, but now it's going to be going to hit back with 100 damage. Uh, which puts it in a great spot um, for you could actually go choice ban D 
DCE on Tapu Lele and take the knockout if that's the case. Yeah. Special charge, going to buy back some energy. Arlo didn't need that special charge in, the, in that first game. Get some value here. DCEs went on some bizarre Pokemon at the start, including that Trubbish. Special charge, going to throw those computer back search in. about to come down here. Going to propagate uh, both eggs back. Get a free computer search, essentially. Search a deck for any card. Um, here, he has a massive hand right now. Uh, could be looking at an additional supporter as well, or into some more Pokemon on the bench. He has a, he only has the one Trubbish down. He has the Ditto. Um, looks like he's eyeing a Rescue Stretcher here off this computer search here to bring that Garbotoxin back in play. And maybe Colrus draw a big hand and hopefully hit that Garbotoxin right back. Garbotox actually be huge right now because he can shut off that Mirror Code ability um, or Mirror Force uh, on the Sigilith there to take the KO. Mirror Counter is the name you're looking for there, Jeff. Um, that's what I get for uh, body in the phone up next to me So we, when we were looking up that card. <laughs> mirror Counter Computer Search shuffling some stuff in. Arlo needs a little help here. Uh, that wonky start really not helping him a whole lot. And Andrew just kind of was like, all right, I guess I'll just attach some stuff and start swinging. Uh, a little bit of a misstep in Arlo, not reading all the text on Sonic Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, got caught with his pants down a little bit. And now is. is trying to pivot and do the best he can off this chorus. Chorus for nine here. Oh, more than that. It's going to be ten. ten. He has six on the bench because of the sky field there. So ten. Hopefully going to find a way to get to this Garbotoxin, Garboder. Uh, and shut down uh, this Sigilyph's uh, mirror counter ability here so Zork can stay clean. Uh, Arlo does need to hit the rescue stretcher to make that happen as he, he had to he discard. Did, he, he did it with the uh, computer search. Is there an Ultra Ball in there? There was an Ultra Ball for sure. Uh, the only thing here is I don't see a tool. To, there's a choice band. You typically don't want to attach that choice band uh, as the tool. Uh, so he's just going to opposite the KO here knockout. and just say, hey, I'll take, I'll take 100 back on myself. All right. Pseudo Wudo. Uh, so DC Choice Man uh, seals this up for Andrew. Guzma on something small in the back, maybe. Oh, trash trash Lynch. Lynch Garbodor. There shaking the hand. We're off to game two. Woo. These games are flying by fast right now. Um, yeah, I mean, Arlo has had a really rough start there. He, uh, <laughs> Andrew's able to go Sigilith a second. DCE, Sonic Wing. Sonic, Sonic Wing. Wing. Sonic Wing. <laughs> and then was able to go Sonic, Sonic Wing. Knockout. Knockout. Uh, didn't even have to lean on that uh, GX attack, which might be a nice little uh, trick in the back pocket for mm -hmm. um, for Andrew to have. Uh, Arlo just took a quick look at the card, missed the bottom text on Sonic Wing, uh, may not have read all of Intercept GX, mm -hmm. and uh, if he's not careful or doesn't keep that, keep that piece of information in the back of his mind, uh, could could get hung up with a little bit of Intercept. And I think that was the pivotal point right there. I mean, obviously, Arlo was already in the back foot with those first two knockouts, easy on the execute there and the trubbish uh, as well, but yeah, not being able to read that text right there and not seeing that uh, that it does not apply resistance there, thinking his Zork would have survived the turn. Unfortunately, there easy two prizes right there, put him ahead miles ahead right there in that matchup, and Arlo was really having to grind and get back into it. My only concern here, Andrew, uh, win game two. They're into game three, obviously. Um, my concern is, Andrew, we don't know if he's going to change up his approach to the matchup mm -hmm. um, because it he seemed like he had a very strong approach and went sideways pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Arlo just wants to rinse game one and be able to play some cards down. So we're, they, they flipped their Pokemon over. We're dropping down to the action. Uh, Ooh, natural Bridget. Bridget. Natural Bridget, as we say, when you just have it in your opening hand. Um, great way to start for Arlo. A couple Zoroas, maybe a Trubbish. And I think we have that Supernatural Dance or a Choreo in the active. So four Zoroas uh, on the three zero on the desk right now. Yeah, it is the or Choreo right now. Arlo Neal decides, yep, the three Zoroa, Trubbish on the bench right now. Off the Natural Bridget. And let's see what else he has in hand right now. Looks like we have a red card, actually. That could be off the way. He decides to hold the red card. Computer search off the top deck for Andrew. See a sidekick. See an N, I think, that's next to the sidekick. Computer search. Throwing it back N. And a Trash Lanch Garbodor might see a Bridget on Andrew's side to get a Grandpa and a couple uh, Trubbish down. Or excuse me, a Drampa GX and a couple uh, Trubbish down. Yeah, him discarding the N right there tells me he has another supporter in hand right now and is probably going to opt for that Bridget play. Or he has a supporter he'd rather play. Uh, but he has to get the Lele down. That's probably step one into uh, doing a Bridget play out of, out of your deck. Well, computer search, he can just go straight oh, for right. Bridget. Oh, I, I did do. I think he did Ultra Ball. My 
My apologies there. Straight for the Bridget. Pseudo Wudo Roadblock. Uh, maybe a couple Trubbish. Maybe a Dramp on a Trubbish. Uh, we're going to see what flavors Andrew wants to get here. Has quite a few options. Um, Arlo sandbagging that red card. Um, He's doing the flip opposite of what he did game one there. Game one, we saw Drampa Drampa Pseudo Wudo there. But I guess this already has the active Drampa right there. So I need two Trubbish here. It, Arlo may be uh, showing some Jedi mind tricks. Uh, yep. Getting Andrew to big wheel GX, and Arlo's going to be going to be able to take care of that. Ten to back down to four, and Arlo's going to have another supporter to use uh, it, because it's right cards matter. It's interesting here because uh, I mean I guess it's more of a courtesy play, but uh, like in game one after uh, Andrew did the big wheel GX, Arlo slapped on the end real quick, so he had to shuffle, waste time shuffling here, and now we're going to see the red card happen yet again after this big wheel. Trade one. Zorua Zoroark. Trade two. DCE and a Shaman, maybe? First Seeker for the Guzma on the Sudowoodo. Nice. And the Sudowoodo and Red Card all in one turn. Red Card. I, ah, any information Andrew got off that 10 cards there. Completely gone now. Shuffle the hand into the deck. Draw four cards. Losing six right now, inevitably. And Zorak GX going to take the knockout on the one thing, stopping it in his path of riotous beating. Fortunately for Andrew, does play three copies of Parallel City, one right off the top there. So uh, going to be able to put a little bit of pressure back down onto uh, Arlo's bench size. Draw for the turn. Andrew was going to promote Drampa. And off the top deck. And off the top deck, Floatstone onto the Trubbish. Had the Floatstone in hand, which is why he was going to promote Drampa and decided to pivot back to the Trubbish uh, in just an N. So off of those four cards, um, at least a Floatstone and a DCE. N was off the top, um, and two two cards that Andrew didn't really want to play. Interesting enough, he didn't want to play the Parallel City down. I wonder if he's waiting to see when Arlo plays the first Skyfield to then play the Parallel City, knowing he's going to get rid of the DC this turn um, with Righteous Edge. Uh, he could be holding out that Parallel City for uh, a bigger chance to use it. My concern with that is Arlo can easily, doesn't have to go full bench off the off the charts to be able to knock out that Drampa GX. Mm -hmm. So I, there's, a, there's a bit of a concern there. That, and especially like now that he hit the Garbotoxin Garbodor, yeah. you'd really love to have that Parallel City down because Arlo can't trade into everything. Just Righteous Edge. 420, going to take care of that DCE. And Arlo, computer search off the top for himself. There's the Skyfield. Mr. Mind Bench Barrier. Shaman. Colrus, what is going on? Oh, man. Uh, Arlo's got to feel good about that series of cards. Yeah, right now, I think he's just missing the DCE right now. One additional Pokemon. Oh, he needs a full bench here to take out the Drampa Garbage, 180 HP there. Uh, so, just needs two more Pokemon here to take out the Drampa. Two more Pokemon and the DCE Eight. or DCE Choice Band. DCE Choice Band, Pokemon, yep. A can get it, can get it a couple different ways. And draw on, what is that, six, seven, eight Pokemon here? There's a good chance he's going to get there. <laughs> DCE, looks like another DCE Ultra Ball. So he has a chance to get another Pokemon there. Did Arlo hit a basic? Teal Blower, up. Oh, he's going to get trade. Well, now that unlocks everything. Arlo can just trade to uh, this whatever is, he needs. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the spot right here. Here comes the additional Pokemon here. Might be a third Zorg G or another Zorg GX here. Oh, going for the Shaman. Yeah, I guess it doesn't hurt playing the Shaman at, at this point either because you're going to be able to draw cards too, and then if Andrew does get to that Parallel City, this is an easy Pokemon to bump away. Ditto Prism, Shaman, full bench. Now just needs the DCE. Draw three. You got... Three trades at least. Yeah, because that's a shaman in the bottom yep. right corner. So you're going to get three trades. Just going to announce prop three times. Here we go. One, two. Looking for a DCE. Do it again. One, two. There it, there is. it is. Do it one more time. Why not? The one, two. Arlo's hand is larger than his deck at this point. Uh, DCE is going to be a knockout. Two attachments for Andrew going to be buried here. And uh, just a trubbish and an ability locking Garbotoxin Garbodor. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Choice man on Zorark, trash lance garb. Like, oh, this board is set and ready to roll right now. Even if he got parallel down, he still has like three Zoraks there and the tr and the uh, trash lance. He's feeling good right now. 
Pokemon communication. Is he going to get another Zorak down right now? Or he's going to get the Garbotoxin and Garbodor? I'm not even sure I'm concerned about I th yeah. abilities on yeah. Uh, Andrew's side of the board. Exactly. There's another Trash Lynch. Trash Lynch, Garbodor. You know, maybe for that uh, Ditto Prism next turn, uh, hoping that Andrew doesn't just immediately lock down abilities with Garbotox and Garb. Andrew does play four copies of Floatstone, though, so worth mentioning. Probably good, a good chance he has it in hand right now as well, knowing that he just promoted the Garbotoxin as well, or has the Guzma in hand. Uh, we do see a Super Rod here, though, bringing back some energy into Drampa. Drampa, energy, and Roadblock, Sudowoodo. Throw those in the deck. Super Rod goes to the bin. We see a, I think I see a Bide Barricade, Wobbuffet, Floatstone, Choice Band, Parallel, Parallel City. City. So Arlo ahead by three prizes. Andrew trying to, now that he hasn't initiated the stadium where he will get the last parallel city, which is uh, worth noting, versus Seeker will play an N. Arlo to three, Andrew to six, and Andrew just wants to be able to do something. And this is Righteous Edge right now. Uh, <coughs> Righteous Edge with Garbotoxin active, ending Arlo to three. Um, plus discarding a DCE would be the second DCE. Has not played special charge just yet this game. Um, so still still, still options out there for Andrew. Yeah, I feel like this is a position that Andrew has played from a lot uh, mm -hmm. in the last two days. That's just kind of how this deck is built. Mm -hmm. You know, Righteous Edge, a lot of, uh, you know, Garbotoxin lock and ends. You know, we've seen that over and over again. And that's how, uh, for example, Alex Shemansky earlier today crawled back into a game. Mm -hmm. Certainly not the 6-1 to one game, uh, which was uh, absolute lunacy. But uh, in the uh, round, I believe it was 13 matchup, uh, 12 matchup that he played in. Uh, Tapu Lele, mm, double colorless. Not Trampa, but he's able to hit for 80 damage right now. 80 damage into the Zorark. Um, only 80 damage coming back onto that Tapu Lele. Arlo, no abilities, and his one copy of Field Blower is gone. Arlo's A spec of choice is Computer Search. Um, so n that's not coming back. Yep. Andrew Martin now has control um, of the Garbotoxin, and Arlo can only knock it out, uh, can only get out from uh, under the lock if yep. he knocks out the Garbotoxin Garbodor. Yep, does 80 right back to Tapu Lele. So Choice Man here on the Tapu Lele will uh, permit uh, Andrew to take the knockout. Uh, psychic Energy, probably going to find its way onto that Trubbish, I'd imagine. And I think that's that an Acerola as well. That is an Acerola, um, something we haven't seen any time Andrew has been on camera. Mm -hmm. um, but a good way to get some mileage here. Oh, opts for a Chorus here. Chorus for seven. Seems like a good play. Um, could get that Choice Band like you were just mentioning as well to take the KO here with Tapu Lele on his Zork GX. Uh, bringing Andrew to four prizes to Arlo's three here in game three. Gonna Colrus going to be drawing seven cards. Uh, gonna try and find uh, Trash Lanch Garbodor. Um, maybe a Drampa. Mm -hmm. And it looks like on the other side of the bracket there, Andy Gray does take game one to Azul uh, in that Archie Stories mirror. Seven cards for Andrew. Hasn't played anything down yet. Taking a look. I do see a choice band there, so that uh, Tapu Lele is good to go to take a knockout here as uh, the ri uh, Righteous Edge plus Energy Drive plus another Energy mm -hmm. Drive will be enough to take the KO here. And Andrew just crossing his fingers that Arlo doesn't have a DCE uh, to hit back into this uh, Tapu Lele. Here we go. Here's Zorg GX to get promoted here. Probably the one with the Choice Band. Oh, no, Ops for the other one here. Maybe Float Stone in hand to change his mind. Okay, decides to do this. Choice Band because now all you need is the DCE, DCE to yep. be able to hit in. Versus Seeker off the top. Colrus going to get six cards. Does he have any other Pokemon to bench here to get that at seven? Skyfield. Skyfield going to bench. Choice Band coming down. Top Roadblock Pseudo Wudo no longer active because of Garbotoxin. So Arlo can do the same play he did in game one mm -hmm. and just, well, hope I get a bunch of Pokemon here in a DCE and just take this knockout. 
He doesn't have very many in his discard pile right now. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's actually a few from that Parallel City earlier there, but he still has options there. He still has a lot of Zorak still left. I think a 1-1 one -one line available to him there and some uh, Trebush as well. So there's definitely potential to get these Pokemon in there. He still hasn't ran into his Mr. Mimes just yet either. So there's a few options here. Just need to see one of the two remaining DCEs left in his deck, and it doesn't look like he hit those. That's an egg, but I don't see a DCE. So found the Pokemon, did not find the energy attachment to attack. Special charge, going to throw... 2 DC back in. Mm -hmm. Still had pretty decent odds without those DCs back in there, uh, but unfortunately just fell a little short. So maybe this is the moment where Andrew can get back into this game. Andrew seeing the light at the end of the tunnel right now. Four prizes to Arlo's three. No pressure being applied to this Tapu Lele anymore. Garbotoxin putting in an extra, extra pinch to this matchup right now. Um, and Lele could just sit there and just chip away with, what, 70 damage at a time right now currently? And there's a pass from Arlo. 70. However, Parallel City is crucial here. Andrew needs to drop down a Parallel City right now. Parallel City would be big. Would be big. I think Arlo already went through one Skyfield earlier in the game. There's one right there. This will be number two on the Skyfields here. So only leaving Arlo with one left to really get a full play out, play out of. So I agree with you here. Par Parallel City will be huge to solidify this matchup. Andrew Martin going through his hands. Can't really tell what he's got. Is that a little is that a trubbish in the front? Do you see a Versus Seeker here? Um, little hand notion there. Do you think he's doing a little bit of number, number counting in his head to see what the, what to do exactly. Uh, we do see the Oracorio come down now, though. Uh, Arlo instantly going to discard pile to see how many uh, cards he has in deck. Adventures bag, grabbing, I believe that's a muscle band and a float stone. Hmm, interesting enough here. Muscle band, float stone, not sure what it's going to get applied to right now. I guess just another option if something was to get used up uh, to be stalled out for. Or maybe if the field blower, another field blower comes out into play, uh, it's what Andrew might be anticipating. He doesn't know that only the one is gone. Um, here we go. Okay, so float stone here, Guzma play. Uh, gonna um. retreat the Oracorio back out, maybe attack with Lele, or maybe a trashless Garboder himself. Supernatural Dance? Uh, conserving the or Psychic Or Revelation energy. Dance. There's a state of play here, so that's 60 damage right there. Or he's on an Oracorio. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is there six or seven there? So he puts two there. Three and one. So the reason he put the two there is because with that muscle band in hand, he can attach the muscle band to this Oracorio. Revelation Dance for 50 times two weakness on 100 damage on the Garboder. Arlo Neal prompted to act here. Ultra Balls after attaching a float zone to the Trash Lanch Garbodor. Pitching another Trash Lanch Garbodor, getting a Trubbish on the bench. Klefki. Here is a big chorus here. He has to hit a DC off this here. The float zone is on the active now. He can. Uh, pull back in here with a DCE. He has all four in deck now. Well, two for sure. Uh, we don't know what those last three prizes are, but two for sure back in the deck off of that special charge. You can take the KO here at Oracorio, and this needs to eye down that Tapu Lele GX for the last two prizes. Big Colrus here. Gonna draw, what, 10 cards? Mm hmm. There's the DCE right there at the bottom card. And he benches Roadblock Pseudo Wudo. Gonna bench a Tapu Lele. Gonna go ahead and fill it up right now while he has a chance to, depending on if Andrew has an N or any other kind of play to slow or hinder his chances at pulling off this game here. Uh, Mr. Mime being the eighth Pokemon to come down here, which means <coughs> Acerola will no longer be able to be used on. Oh, he has Garbatox in the play. Garbatoxin play is shutting down that scoop up block. However, just a retreat into the Zorark with DCE, easy knockout. Two prizes left for Arlo and a Tapu Lele, heavily damaged on the bench. Arlo with the big hair right now. We can safely assume probably he has the Verse Seeker or the Guzma in hand right there. Andrew needs a big N in a parallel city to, to come back in this game. I think that's a mysterious treasure on his side. 
can't really see what he'd be going for right now. Possibly the trash lance Garboder. I don't know how many items are in Arlo's discard pile, but he has gone through a fair amount of his deck there, and it could be enough to take the KO on this Zorark here. Perfect setup here would be Trash Lance Garbodor if there's enough items for a knockout. Acerola the Tapu Lele and uh, Parallel City. I don't think Andrew has all those resources, but teammates get you one step closer. The That's teammates for sure, sure going to be the Trash Lance and the Parallel City if he doesn't have those combination of cards already in his hand. Uh, but also, like you said, depends on the amount of items in the discard pile. He needs, what, 11 for t 220 damage there. Uh, 250 with the uh, choice span. Uh, so actually, 10, 10 items there should be enough there, including uh, resistance. Looks like he's grabbing Drampa and the Parallel City. Now hasn't attached for turn, and um, Skyfield is live. So benching the Drampa down, bumping the Skyfield will allow Andrew to clear that Tapu Lele off the board. Ah, I like that. Good call there, Kirk. There, we're gonna see energy come down here. Probably do a righteous edge as well if he doesn't have the trash lanch um, here. But parallel city, yep. Bumping Skyfield, clearing the lele off. There's that easy KO. Arlo down to three. Uh, and it's gonna be tough right now. I believe Arlo's already used a super rod as well. So, um, you know. Going through one parallel city is very possible for Zork to, you know, you know, re regain and come back in it there. Bumping with two, with a full bench, it's gonna be really hard to recover from. Righteous Edge, I believe the other card that Andrew got off of teammates, uh, so that was Drampa and the parallel city. Yeah, off of teammates. Consider this: if Andrew has um, the Acerola, can actually a Acerola, assuming this Drampa doesn't get knocked out. Put up the tra uh, the Garbodor with the Floatstone, mm -hmm. rinse, repeat, Righteous Edge, another DCE off, and that would put Arlo with just two copies of that left. So right now Arlo is only one in this card now, so Arlo should have three attacks left here. Um, doing two shots right now because of the choice ban. Um, so um, we could see this play here. How many items in the discard pile? We, I, wish we, I wish we had the number there. Does he have Floatstone. 10 items? Choice Muscle ban here. And, and, okay. and the two. So it's not going to be the Acerola here. Um, with uh, Zorark with the two damage from the Righteous Edge might might make it a little bit closer um, to the amount of items Andrew would need for Arlo to have in his discard to take this knockout. Mm -hmm. Not information we're currently privy to, mm -hmm. um, but the way that Andrew has sequenced this turn, I'm under the impression that this would be a knockout. Especially putting the Floatstone down on, um, on the Drampa. Right now, uh, two cars for Arlo, four for Andrew. Mm -hmm. We are more than likely going to see a trash lance this turn. Versus Seeker, Seeker is hand. nice. Uh, versus Seeker and uh, Psychic Energy. Going to come down on the Trubbish. Remember, that Drampa picked up that Psychic Energy last turn. Mm -hmm. And if this is a knockout... It will now we only need nine items of discard pocket with the two damage from the Righteous Edge. Nine items, items 180, 210 with the tr with the choice band. Back to 190 with resistance there. If there's nine items in there, that's a KO. It gives me a little bit of pause that Andrew's counting now. It seems like there's I think that's uh, why a I think sufficient there's amount. There's 10 items in there. Doing some uh, quick math. Count the number of items times two. Tack a zero on the end. That's mm -hmm. how much damage you're doing. Don't forget to factor in resistance. This is not Sonic Wing. There it is. <laughs> that is a KO. Down to two prizes. Both players were in the... We're in the best part of the game right now. Who's going to be able DCE to pull it off out? DCE off the top. DCE it's off not the enough. top. Does he have a Guzma? It is not. So he has to play Super Rod yet. So here's some more Pokemon to come back in the deck there. Um, but he's a Skyfield. He has one left to play. and But without, you know, Choice Band doesn't do anything to a non-EX Pokemon here. He needs to have the Guzma right now and can take the knockout uh, on the Drampa on the bench. If he has the Guzma, I would eventually say if he had the Guzma, he would have played it already with the Choice, with the, with the DCE. Plays the N himself. Both players going to two. What we're probably going to see here is that uh, if Arlo doesn't hit, uh, he's not going to do anything at all this next turn. He's going to draw his cars and probably just you know, sit on those, whether they're good or bad, whether it might be. Retreat the trash lance garbage or promote the trubbish and just let that one be the sacrificial one and hopefully hits the Guzma off the next draw with the DC. So Arlo going to go to two. Oh, just recycled in a psychic energy. Only plays two copies of that, as we mentioned. 
and uh, another part of a uh, Garbodor line. There's one slow rolling himself. I like the style points on that. Uh, maybe retreat. Yep, as you said. No. Yep. Nope. Retreat to Oracoria. Okay, give him another alpha of trash lane. Does as well. Andrew Martin have the Guzma? Guzma seals this game up on that Zorark GX. This is down to the wire. Unlike game one, Andrew able to establish a very Rest strong. Rest here. Or a uh, garbage. Okay, another trash lynch here. Okay. Trash lynch carrying a muscle band. Announces is. knockout. This is the turn. And Arlo has to have energy. There is psychic energy. Does he have a Guzma? That's it. Trash lynch. And then return knockout for the game. Andrew Martin moving Whoa, on. Down to the to wire. The finals. Down to the wire. And, you know, we said uh, in that end that Andrew played not playing down uh, the Parallel City proved to be very, very uh, strong play mm -hmm. because uh, Parallel City ended up being trapped in the end because yep. he didn't initiate that trade war. Yep. Arlo did. Yep. Now, you kind of have to garbo toxin and in prey. That's, that's part of your strategy. Yep. Yep. That's part of your strategy. So at any point in time, Arlo could have gotten Energy Guzma, mm -hmm. and we could be walking out of here shaking a different man's hand. Yep. However... Andrew stuck to the gun, stuck to the game plan, has done what he's been doing all weekend long, able to squeak out a very, very tight game against Arlo Neal of Tennessee. Great performance by both players, both finishing in the top four. Andrew saying top four is good, finals is better. I'll see you there. Deck mainly built to handle these Zorak Garbador decks with the Parallel City with the Drampo with the Righteous Edge. Trash Lynch to hit for the heavy, heavy damage there with all the items that get played there. Um, well played for both players there. Arlo really handling that matchup well. Uh, was able to squeak out one victory there. Ultimately, Andrew Martin was able to take the victory here and move on to the finals. And it looks like we're going to take a second here and take an interview with Andrew Martin himself. Welcome back. We are here with top four winner, Andrew Martin, making his way to the finals now with Drampa slash Sigilyph's Garboder deck. Um, great matchup there. I feel like you built this to kind of maintain those Zorak decks and keep them in check. Um, let's talk about that matchup a little bit there. Arlo was able to take that first victory there. How are you feeling after that kind of, you know, extensive matchup right there? Well, I realized I misplayed uh, game one. I didn't realize he had the... I was paying attention to his uh, prize. He got up a lot faster than I thought, so he mm -hmm. had two prizes left. Obviously, he should have reversed parallel and knock out the, the, yep. uh, the damage Pokemon, but uh, uh, I was kind of like, ah, I should have done that. But uh, you know, going into game two, that's what I was thinking about. Like, okay, it's... Hone in, figure out what we're doing here. So pivotal point in game two there was that Sigil lift there where I don't think Arlo noticed the resistance uh, factor there when he was attacking to uh, uh, Mirror Counter as well. And uh, when he was able to attack back with uh, Sonic Wing, uh, didn't catch that there. So it, I bet you felt like a big sigh of relief that uh, uh, didn't catch it there. But got game two um, and Garbatoxin really big here. Going into right. game three, um, well, actually game two there, you had a lot of easy knockouts in the beginning there <laughs> with a little bit of dead draw. Game three, though. Um, you know, both players getting set up there, and you start to really ramp up there. Held, uh, held parallel cities there. Uh, what was your thought process there? You, you know, you did, you had a chance to play it early before you had that end there uh, in the middle of the turn. Um, you opted to hold off that parallel. Uh, so, kind of tell me what was going through your mind then. So, what happens is basically, um, I only play three parallel. So, yep. and I'm pretty sure if they play three Skyfield, you have to like you have to be constantly bouncing their Skyfield. Yep. And I was worried about him knocking out. I mean, once I get uh, Toxin out, all I, I, I suit Duke Locks off, so I have to have the Parallels for late game. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought about playing it, but then uh, I figured if he's going to bounce, he has three Skyfields in deck still, and still, like, Colors for tons, so he's probably going to bail to bounce it. So mm -hmm. better off to hold on for it later and then uh, be able to get the end uh, Grabo Toxin stick. So uh, Arch Toys, 
I mean, it might be our Azul, might be Andy Gray. Uh, you're going to face that 100% in the finals right now. Yeah. How have you done with that matchup so far this weekend? Uh, got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a few. I mean, there's a lot of good things, obviously. I've been a Garbo Toxin deck yep. that you're able to lock off the abilities. Plus, I also play Wapa Fett, so like, yep. then the active turn one is really good. Uh, actually, Sigil of GX is like my uh, go-to card in that matchup. For okay. The, uh, all the uh, the mirror bounce back, yep. attack, but also the GX attack. GX attack uh, intercept. Yep. Been able to hit uh, a lot of big numbers with the GX attack if they load up a board and if they hit into it. So, uh, so lots of favorable things going on there. Definitely see a lot of uh, a lot of thought into that deck there. A lot of a lot, you put a lot of pass to it there. It looks, looks like you got a lot of reps as well. Um, a lot of intriguing cards for each matchup. Uh, I'm gonna let you get a little breather here. Let you relax <laughs> some. Yeah, thank you. Uh, get focused in for the finals matchup here. We'll be back on here with the finals match here with Andrew Martin versus one of the Archie Stories players. We'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. <laughs>